Welcome to Private Club Radio, your weekly source for industry education, news and discussion. Broadcasting from Tampa, Florida, ladies and gentlemen, here is your host, Gabriel Aloisi. So excited you made it here to spend a few minutes of your day with us. How cool is that? I appreciate it. I thank you for it. I'm so happy to bring you one of my very best friends in the Tampa Bay area today on this episode. We're reaching outside the private club industry. I'm finding topics and ideas and lessons that you need to hear that you just don't hear anywhere else. But you do hear on Private Club Radio, my goal is to not only educate, but to bring you new ideas to stretch you and to help you grow. And I think my guest is going to do that for you today. She certainly does it for me. My guest today is Diane Allen of Visions Applied, and Diane is a catalyst for visionaries. She helps leaders, people in leadership positions, be their very best. And she's going to give us some advice on today's episode. The amount of value that she spills in a short time is honestly mind-blowing. In fact, it's so mind-blowing that I had to kind of stop her because sometimes when you get too much of a good thing, when too much value is flowing, it almost becomes overwhelming. Do you know what I mean? Like you go to a conference and a speaker has so many great points that after a while, you don't even know where to begin. So I ended up stopping Diane during this interview and I changed gears and I did something that I've never done before and would never in a million years guess I would do. It happened absolutely spontaneously, but it was absolutely perfect. And so if you're lucky enough to stick around until the end of the episode, there is a serious treat I think you're going to love. Now, you might think it's crazy. You might think it's a waste of time. And that's okay, too. So you can use the tool that I'm about to give you, that Diane shares with you. Or you can forget about it. Either way, it's completely up to you. But it's there if you want it. I will be back to listen to this episode a few times because I enjoyed it. And I hope you do too. Well, my guest today is a really good friend of mine, Diane Allen of Visions Applied. Diane is an ambassador and mentor for successful individuals and visionary leaders. She wrote a book, Daily Meditations for Visionary Leaders, which I read every single day. She also has a podcast of the same name, and I'm just so excited to have her here on Private Cup Radio to share her wisdom with us. Diane, welcome. Thank you, Gabe. I'm so excited to be here. This is going to be a blast. I just want to first let folks know about you and your background and how you help individuals out there. Can you share a little bit of that with us? Yes, I've been inspired for years. I've been working, helping successful people for, I don't know, over a quarter of a century now. Most of the, my clients are CEOs of like large companies, you know, PhDs in chemistry and that kind of things, recording musicians that are household names and professional athletes, college athletes, um, high school athletes, even people being groomed for the pros. And mostly the people I work with, you could safely say, are outside of the league of even good in their own field. They're the best. And what they're looking for is that edge to get them to the next level or to be able to maintain that level. So I work a lot behind the scenes as their catalyst, as their mentor, as the guiding light to make sure that they're at their peak game, whether it's musically, athletically, or otherwise. So I I have the honor of being that person behind the scenes that helps the person who's in the front really pull off amazing, amazing things. Yeah. And you're an educator yourself. Um, In addition to the books and podcasts you've written, I've attended your annual retreat, which you do every year. Mm -hmm. You've got a number of uh, other retreats that you put on. So talk about some of the education that you put on for folks. Well, I've been teaching education for many, many years. I've worked with Cintas Corporation, Coca-Cola, the um, CENTCOM here at MacDill Air Force Base, the Pinellas County School System. And I also run my own retreats where I do some webinars, but mostly they're live retreats, day-long retreats. And this year, my annual treat's a three-day retreat at a golf resort. Um, 
And so we're going to be having golfing for the families and everything. And so that people can have the recreation along with the education this year. Yeah, that's right. It's actually going to be at my client Hammock Beach, which is this beautiful property on the east coast of Florida that you're going to be doing your annual retreat at. Is it September this year or October? No, it's October 19th to the 21st. Nice. Well, I will be there. So I think after folks hear you today, I think you'll probably have a few more fans showing up as well. Uh, well, first thing I want to talk to you about is the vision, creating a vision. That's the name of your book and of your podcast. Um, talk to us about what a vision is and how do you find that vision? Wow. Okay. A vision, that's also the name of my company too, right? Visions Applied. And for me, and when I'm working with people who are these high-level people, and I think it's true for everybody, is we want to be connected to our vision. And our vision is the fuel, it is the destination, it is the focus of everything that we do, whether it's personally or professionally. So like one, my vision is to educate and inspire and so once I got connected to that many years ago by doing some inner work and just really letting myself get clear, now, if that's my question, does this educate, does this inspire, is what I'm being offered to do or not do something that really serves the people and serves myself, or is it just a fun sideline thing? And so vision is so important, especially when you're leading a team or you're doing something. I race sailboats and I'm in that world that if I can't communicate my vision, I can't get anywhere. And if I'm the leader, I need to be able to communicate it really, really well. Yeah, totally. So all clubs have their own internal vision or their own internal course that they're on. And that's kind of a line in some way, right? So the vision that you might have as a leader needs to really clearly be focused on what the vision of the club is. Is that, is that correct? Exactly. If you are in a club and you're the manager and you have one vision for the club and the board has a different vision and your members are yet on another page and or there's a lot of lack of clarity, nobody's real clear on what the vision is, except we're just here to have a good time or whatever, then it can create a lot of chaos and often a lot of unhappiness and a lot of people coming home kind of disgruntled. And so the manager is responsible for communicating the vision. What are we here for? What are we about? Are we here for fun? Are we here for competition? Are we here for both? You know, if like even the food, people always say, well, you know, food is food. I said, no, it isn't. People remember food everywhere they are. And so what's the vision for what that memory is going to be? What's the vision for what's going to happen when people come to your club or engage with you in any way? And if you're not clear as the leader, then your people aren't going to be clear. Then your next check is going to have to be, how are you going to communicate it in a way they understand it? That's the key. Yeah, that's that's a great point. I mean, as a custodian of the vision, as it were, you've got to really speak the language of the folks that are on your bus, right? So how do you go about it? I know you've got some tips on how folks can better communicate with people on their team and make sure that they're on the same page. Yes. The first thing is to remember the meaning of your communication is the response you're getting. So if you're getting that deer in headlights look or that confused tilted head like you're the dog, you know, the dog's confused, that means you're using language set that your listener does not understand. So I make sure that I, what I do is I call it leading and pacing, where I listen to the person who I'm engaging with and I use their language with them. I don't use my language unless it's the same as mine. So if somebody is using a, a certain set of, of language, that's the word I use to describe something so that then it's familiar to them. So it's my responsibility as the speaker, as the leader, to lead in pace and work with the people I'm talking to on their level, not on my level, because I might use a different word. You know, like I always tell the story when I first was having my website done and my web web person said, no, make sure your site's updated. And I'm like, all right, cool. I mean, like, what do you think? I'm going to do old news. It was so weird to me. And I said, sure, it'll be updated. Well, then I learned a few months later that update in that world meant something different than update in my world. It's the same word and it's the same definition, but the usage is different. So when we pay attention to those nuances and the way our listener communicates and we match that, we have better rapport, we have better results, and we're typically not frustrated. We're typically able to do what we need to do because it's clear instead of trying to figure out what do they want. 
Yeah. The the ear is really a muscle like anything else. You have to develop it. And I'm just wondering, Diane, do you have any tricks or tips or hacks for people who want to develop? How do they listen? How do they get on the same page with their folks? The easiest way to do it, if you're not used to it, is listen for how they describe something. Most people are visual. So they're going to say, I see what you're saying. Or They'll notice the color or how light something is. It will be a visual word. You'll hear it in their language. Some people, however, do most things auditory. So they'll say, I hear you. So the same response, if I'm engaging with you, if you say, I see what you're saying, oh, that means that person is seeing. They're making pictures based on what I'm saying. So I'm going to keep painting pictures for them. If the person comes back and says, I hear you, then I'm going to make sure I'm telling a story that has enough detail that they can hear what I'm trying to say. So I will change whether I'm making a picture for you or whether I'm telling you a story in order for you to be able to receive it better. Now, a lot of people have both. It's called visual with an auditory link, meaning if you give them both, there's never going to be a question. So sometimes when I'm teaching those big education seminars, I kind of weave both. I'll tell the story one way, then I'll paint it another way because then I'm sure I've got everybody in the room. If There's like a lot of people. But that's a first easy way to do it. Um, the other way is if you're speaking to somebody and they're looking down or you're looking down, you're not going to be very effective because when we look down like at our lap, what we're doing is we're telling our body to key into our emotions and our gut, not into what we're hearing or seeing. And so therefore, we're going to disengage a lot easier. So I make sure that when I'm in meetings and I have things going on, phones aren't around where people are looking down. And if I need to do something, I'm making sure I'm looking up and I'm having eye contact so that my brain and your brain are connected and I'm not pulling myself out of the engagement by looking down. Wow, those are really powerful. (laughs) I think I'm going to use some of those with my own company (laughs) as we speak because... Yeah, it's true. In my world, obviously, most people are visionary people or uh, visual people, I should say, because I'm working with designers, web developers, people that work in that creative world. But, you know, there's a lot of disconnect. If I'm talking to my accountant, (laughs) they're definitely not a visual person. They're a numbers person, which probably means they're an auditory person, I imagine. But they also interact with that logical side of the brain. So, man, that's a really powerful tip because each person is going to have their own unique ways of listening. And if you want to get the message through, if you want to get everybody on the same page, that's the way to do it. That's really fantastic. Any other tips on, on along those lines that we should cover before we move on? Well, those are the two biggest ones. And the other one I, I think I always want to say is to, to listen with your heart and to realize that everybody's a person and you're going to have a good day and bad days and they're going to have good days and bad days and some days we're on it and other days we're not and it's all going to be okay. That there's nothing that, that, that is that urgent and to, to give yourself and everyone else just a little bit of compassion and kindness and realize that everybody woke up today trying to do their best. Everybody woke up no matter what's happening trying to do their best. And when we remember that, it's a lot easier to communicate with people when we let our heart be in part of it, no matter what the stress level is. Yeah. Now, you also, I know you. one of your philosophies is that you really need to be clear, direct, and precise. So can you elaborate on that? Oh, yes. <laughs> clear, direct, and precise is, is a big one. Um, I teach all my high-end executives and, I, and my musicians, too, because they sometimes can talk in lyrics um, to the, I have a rule, and that is use five-word sentences and no more than five sentences to get your point across. That's 25 total words. Because the moment you start over-explaining yourself, you're going to lose it. You're going to lose whatever it is. And so I'm a big one on be very clear, be very precise, make sure you know the meanings of the words you're using and use those meanings for them, and make sure that everything has succinct meaning to that so that everything's got the common denominator all ready to rock and roll. And then if somebody wants the story or they need elaboration, it's up to the listener to ask you for the elaboration, right? So you're the speaker. You will say everything clear and direct and precise, A, B, C, and not in a rude way, still with compassion. But the better clarity you have, then the better the person who's trying to follow what you want them to do is going to be able to do it. And um, it's kind of like, you know, if I if I was having Gabe work on something for me for my website and I said, well, I want it green. He's like, well, great. What kind of green? There's a gazillion kinds of green. Well, you know, pretty. 
that's not helping him any, right? He's going to walk away completely confused. And sadly, a lot of managers give that kind of general advice because we think everybody's in our head and they know what we mean. And I'm here to tell you, nobody sees the world the way you do and nobody knows exactly what you mean. So your words are just that bridge. And so we want to build a really good bridge. I love that. That's such great advice. Well, the other thing that a lot of managers in this world struggle with is obviously huge amounts of stress. There's lots of things happening. I know you're a big proponent of the midday reset. So can you explain that philosophy to us? Yes. The midday reset is um, something I designed years ago, running um, a large center for gifted people. Actually, that's when CNN came to um, interview me and, and it was a very stressful work environment. I was the director. And so everybody was having a hard time getting through the day. So I said, okay, we're going to hit the reset button. And so what we all did is we stopped from one to one fifteen was the time I picked. You, you know, you could pick any time that works for you. And the phones were turned on auto, you know, answering service. Everything was off, phone, everything. We all went into what was then um, like a meeting room and we meditated and we relaxed. I played some very nice kind of ambient music. Sometimes I led a meditation, sometimes I didn't, but everybody had a chance to breathe and relax and just reset the day. And when we went out of that room, the mantra was the day is starting new. And so that was like the morning. It was like 9 a.m. again, even though it was one fifteen. And so what happened was everybody in that organization was more productive, was happier, stress levels went down, sickness went down, people wanted to be there. And in fact, the people who pushed back the most in the beginning missed it the most when I missed it, like if I wasn't gone or an emergency or something. So I do a mid-set, midday reset for myself. It's even on my Meditations for Visionary Leaders podcast. I, I voiced one for people that several of my clients use over and over that take seven minutes. That's all it is, seven minutes. And stop. Just turn everything off for a minute. Stop. Sit back in the chair. Relax. Breathe for a second. Everything's going to be okay. That seven minutes is going to do nothing other than help you be more effective once you breathe through it and you let yourself reset. And you come out of it new. Like, okay, it's first thing in the morning. And now you're refreshed. Your creativity's there. Your mind's working. Everything's cooking right along. And people wonder how you can go so long. It's because you can reset any time. Yeah, I think our bodies really need that, especially with all the technology and crap. Like We're sitting in a room right now, and I'll describe it for the listeners of the podcast. I've got uh, a big audio board. I've got my computer screen staring me in the face. Both of our phones are right beside us, and text messages have been coming in and other (laughs) updates through that. We've got a camera in front of us. It's live streaming this because we're doing a live stream episode at the same time we're recording this, and we've got two microphones pinned to our face. So... And of course, it's all connected to Wi-Fi. So there's a million other waves just bouncing around. I've got to imagine that's got to affect our bodies in some way. And so we really need to take that time to just focus and disconnect in a, in a way. Do you think that's that's the case? Oh, absolutely. I'm real sensitive to EMFs. And so I have copper in my office because it fragments them. And I do other things to keep myself so that I don't get all um, agitated. If you have too many fluorescent lights in your building or... Um, too many EMFs, it can make everyone agitated. And the blue flickering light of screens can agitate people. And so if you've got fluorescent lights in your club and you're sitting under them all day long and there's stress going on in your world, those fluorescent lights are actually making the stress worse. That's a huge tip that I think a lot of people don't think about the lighting. So we're actually sitting in my office right now. I have a fluorescent light up above us, which I've turned off. I do have another uh, little lamp on my desk, but even in, in the main part of our office, we have we turn the fluorescence off and we have just little pot lights, and it's it puts you in a creative mood. I think automatically, and I think that's why creatives do it a lot. But the right lighting is important for all sorts of people, and the worst thing in the world, I think, is fluorescent lights. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, fluorescent lights are are just. There's so many things we could derail this podcast in a minute about <laughs> fluorescent lights. But the truth is, is, is they don't work very well. They, they are not good for our human bodies. And so then why are we subjecting ourselves to them? Like everywhere I am, there's no fluorescent lighting. I mean, they're installed in the offices I'm in, but I never turn them on. I go either by I use a sunlight. Thankfully, I'm in Florida, so it's easier. Or I have ot lights, which are, you know, the sun spectrum. And that's what I use because... I want to be compassionate and caring, and I want to be competent and excellent. You know, I have high standards, 
and it matters to me to do very, very well. People who know me know I'm very competitive and, and, you know, second place is the first loser in my book. So I'm all over what I'm doing and, and I don't want something to get in my way. That's as simple as turning a light switch off and adding a lamp. Yeah. Right. And, and I know we're, we are going down the rabbit hole on this, but I was in the film business before I, I got into what I do now. And if you actually look at a fluorescent uh, light in a camera, it's usually green or like this weird purple. And I think it's subconscious, but it, it kind of sheds, it casts this really creepy look in our subconscious because it's not really truly white. It's really this other weird color. But anyway, I digress. So let's get back on track. I'm sorry <laughs> I diverted that, but let's just say there's going to be some lighting folks in the industry that are probably happy to hear what I have to say today. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna gonna spring something on you as well. Um, we didn't talk about this before you came on, but it just popped in my head, and I think it'd be different because we've never done anything like this on the show. I actually really like and enjoy your guided meditations. And would you do me the favor and just allow me to ask you? Um, would you be able to actually take us through one of the, maybe a short one, maybe just a couple minutes? Um, of a guided meditation so people can get a taste of, of how effective it can be. To, would that sure. be all right with you? Oh, absolutely. I knew you were going to do this. <laughs> I know. Of course you didn't. <laughs> yes. I'm full of surprises today. You didn't know I was going to live stream this either. So, all no. right. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just sit back and, and um, I'm going to relax and I'm going to let you take over. All right. So the first thing is to make sure you're not driving a car. Have your feet flat on the floor, your body not crossed as best as possible. When you cross your limbs or your hands or something, then it sends mixed messages to the brain. And allow yourself, if you're comfortable, to gently close your eyes, allowing yourself to disconnect from all the visual field. There's no place you have to go. There's nothing you have to do. We're right here. No one's going anywhere. And allow yourself to pay attention to your breath, remembering that your breath starts with an exhale and so exhale fully and then inhale and exhale allowing your exhale to be a little stronger than your inhale with every exhale imagine yourself letting all the stress go by dropping your shoulders, loosening your jaw, exhaling, and inhaling, and pausing your breath and honoring yourself, exhaling any tension, any difficulty, just letting it all go. And as you inhale, you imagine pure love, joy, white light, all coming in, allowing any part of your body that's out of alignment or stressed to simply relax. Exhaling any fear or worry or maybe a doubt. And inhaling love, kindness, peace. Now see if you can notice where you feel the air entering and leaving your body. Do you feel it on your nostrils or maybe the back of your throat? Or maybe you're inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your mouth so you'll notice it in different places. Just notice, lovingly noticing. And as your brain starts thinking about whatever's coming next, just notice where the air is coming in and where the air is going out. Now, if you're willing, I invite you to put your hand over your heart just for a moment. Just take one of your hands and put it over your heart and feel it beating. And take a moment and thank your whole body, your heart included, for working perfectly for you as you go about your day, as you work, as you hold your loved ones, as you make decisions, your body fully supports you in all that you do. Your heart beats without you thinking about it. Your lungs inhale and exhale without you thinking about it. 
perfectly. So this is your time to say thank you. Thank you to all of you, your feet for walking you around, your heart for beating, your brain for thinking of great ideas, your mouth for speaking words of truth and kindness. All of you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And allowing yourself to linger here for just a moment, listen to that still small voice within you. You might be having a great idea or the solution pops in your head to something you've been pondering. Allow the idea and listen. Now remember that you can come to this quiet, still place at any time, simply for the asking, exhaling to release your stress, and inhaling to invite in harmony and joy and peace. And so as we get ready to return to this time in this space, in this amazing podcast, I invite you to wiggle your fingers and toes so you can come back for just a moment. And then open your eyes if you had them closed and see the world new, bright and new. And go forward about your day. And so it is. Wow. Wow. That was pretty awesome, Diane. Ah, Thank you. I tricked you into, into, into giving me something that I could listen to. So thanks for playing along. (laughs) There you go. And you know, I, my clients request to different topics for my meditation podcast. And so some of them might have weird topics. Like there's one called meet and greet because I have a famous musician who has difficulty after the meet and greets. So it's a little reset so he can feel good after meet and greet. So if anybody has any topic question, you know, that you want me to do, I'll do them. That's awesome. That's so cool. I want to just, Again, remind people about the upcoming retreat and maybe how they can learn more about you. I know you've got a special page you've actually put on the website so people can reach out. Yes, I have. My website is visionsapplied.com. And there's all kinds of information there. There's blogs and my podcasts and everything. And we're doing a special page for you all so that you can engage with me in any way you'd like. I work with people individually with mostly custom things. I meet with people, they tell me what they're looking for, and then I create things custom for each of my people since I work with such a diverse group of very successful people. So we're creating a special page for that. What is it going to be called? Because I don't even remember. Visionsapplied.com slash PCR. Oh, that's right. Private Club Radio. Private Club Radio. That's going to be easy. Even I can remember it now. Visionsapplied.com forward slash PCR. And that will have all kinds of special information and a way to contact me. And I'm always available all the time because I believe in serving. Yeah. And you did that today on this episode. Thank you so much for just filling the day with greatness and and being here and sharing your light. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me here. This is so exciting. I feel so honored to um, be here and be sharing. And hopefully somebody was benefited from something I said. I think there's a lot of people. I think you're going to get a lot of comments on this one for sure. Thanks, Diane. You're welcome. Thank you, Gabe. I bet when you woke up today, you didn't think that was going to happen. <laughs> I didn't. Hope you enjoyed it, though. Hope you can use it. Catch you back here next week. Until then, here's to your membership success. Private Club Radio is brought to you by Concert Golf Partners, helping to preserve and enhance private golf and country clubs. Concert Golf has the capital, expertise, and private club hospitality experience to help upscale private clubs achieving long-term success and membership growth. For 25 years, Concert Golf has allowed private club members to focus on simply enjoying their club. Visit concertgolfpartners.com to learn more about the recapitalization process.